Hey everybody, welcome back to Durban's Bourbon. I'm Joe. And I'm Josh. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Remember to like and subscribe. Today we're going to be doing another bourbon review from our trip <clears throat> to Kentucky. We spent uh, seven days uh, traveling along the bourbon trail and hitting the different distilleries and hitting all the tours. So this is a continuation of that trip and we'll be putting pictures uh, which you've already seen there at the beginning. Some I'm gonna <clears throat> the pictures that show the distillery and uh, some cool stuff while we were there. The bottles that we're gonna be reviewing <clears throat> today is the Evan Williams 12 Year. It's the red label. It's only available at the distillery. Uh, they do have a limit. It's two bottles per person. Uh, running price in the distillery was 120 bucks. Uh, it was one of the unicorns if you want to call it that that I was after before we even left to go to Kentucky for this trip I was after it I know Josh was too the <clears throat> tour there was fantastic <clears throat> it's a really um, condensed space it's in it's downtown Louisville at the Evan Williams experience uh, they have it on multiple floors so you get to see a small they have a small micro distillery at the location and it produces one barrel per day uh, of their products. They don't have any of that particular product available yet. It will be coming in the near future, but as bourbon needs to do, it needs to age. So the product that they're making now is in the warehouses uh, aging, and once it hits the profile and the age that they want, they'll produce it, and I'm sure it will be for sale at the distillery or at that location. Uh, the Evan Williams 12 year is, is 101 proof. Uh, it is their standard <clears throat> mash bill. It was a great tour. Uh, I can't yeah, they had a good the tour had a lot of well a lot of the tours they have like a lot of good history but mm -hmm. <clears throat> since they're right on the river and Evan Williams was one of the first uh, what they call them the not dock was the master, harbor master. harbor master yeah that's just kind of cool they have a little more history to it just the just of the uh, area so it's kind of cool mm -hmm. tour and they have like a little movie of it it was yep. fun and they actually have notes from some of the first meetings in the late 1700s or mid 1800s from a town meeting of louisville when it was very very <clears throat> small and it was just a riverside city and there's a set of uh there's a little falls that's just past louisville and you have to go and navigate those so they needed a harbor master to control the flow of traffic so that's kind of how louisville became a city people would have to offload and continue down the rapids and they would have a specialist that would take them through and then they would load all their goods back on their boats at the bottom of the falls so evan williams was one of the first harbor right. masters and fun fact if their boats didn't make it they were stuck in Louisville, and that's how it kind of became a big town. Yep. They would take <laughs> they just, the remains yeah, of whatever their they boat could salvage and wood and and make houses and yep. make whatever they could. So it grew from there. So <clears throat> they actually have minutes, meeting minutes, that you get to yeah. watch that meeting, which is really fascinating. It was just a great place, great tour. Tour guide was awesome, very knowledgeable. And you get to see how distilleries operate from the beginning all the way through. They have a little teeny uh, sample of a Rick house in there. Uh, they do have the operating distillery that does the one barrel per day. So mm -hmm. very worth your time. <clears throat> and you also get, if you do, if you tour Heaven Hill before you go to the Evan Williams experience or vice versa, that other tour will be free. Oh, it's yeah. only like 10 bucks anyways, but sure. or 15 maybe. Right. But uh, so just keep that in mind. If you go there, if you, if you hit this one first and then you go to Heaven Hill, that one will be free or the other way around. Right. Because kind of they're nice. same place. Yeah. Just different locations. The big one and the small one downtown. Yeah. Uh, let's give this one a nose. You can tell, <clears throat> nice dark color. As you know, uh, bourbon can add no colors or artificial flavors to their whiskey. It just comes out of the barrel and it's cut to whatever distillery proof that they want. So, as a 12 year bourbon, it has the colors that you would expect a nice, deep, uh, dark color. Uh, the legs, for what I'm getting, 
uh, pretty slow legs. They're not really <clears throat> running down the glass yet. So that's mm -hmm. going to be an, an indicator of the viscosity level. It's going to be a little oily, stick on the palate, last a little while. You should be able to enjoy it. Uh, probably be, uh, we'll give this a whirl with some water after we try it neat. But it is 101 proof, so it should have a little bit of kick to it. Let's see what the nose has. Honey. Yeah. A lot of honey. I get a lot of barrel char. Yep, there is. <clears throat> and it's not in a... Uh, not in a negative way. It's just kind of it's adds to that graham character. Cracker. Graham cracker. That's interesting. That's the first time I've gotten that. I think. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Because I think it goes along with the honey. Yeah. Honey graham crackers. Yeah. yeah I've got <clears throat> honey, some barrel, some orange or yeah, um, citrus. That orange citrus. Yeah, I get a, I get a little bit of citrus. Yeah. A good, yeah. Good um, hit of citrus, I guess I would say. Orange, orange. No vanilla. <clears throat> Are you getting any vanilla? No. It's more of a caramel. <clears throat> more of a caramel. Caramel, note. citrusy. <clears throat> right. Barrel char. Yeah. I get like I said. I still get that graham cracker. I don't know why graham. I haven't had graham cracker in years. But yeah, <clears throat> but it's what you're getting. It's got. A, it has a really pleasant mm -hmm. nose. It's not as. It's not a, like the alcohol burn on the nose isn't as much as I thought it would be. Right. <clears throat> Apparently the dogs do. Yeah, they get more of it, <clears throat> as you can hear. Something in my throat. The dogs. <clears throat> I'll give it a try. Or yeah. you want to wait till they stop barking? When is that going to happen? Good point. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> yeah, great nose. Yeah. I'm ready to try it. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. We hope you're having a dram with us. Yes. Oh. It's a little spicy. That alcohol. That wasn't a bad. Yeah. I just. With like the wrong pipe. <laughs> it wasn't because the whiskey was bad. It's actually got a good flavor. <clears throat> I took a little second, a really, really small nip, 101 proof. Uh, <clears throat> the candy notes that Josh was talking about, they're there up front, I think for me in the front mm -hmm. of the palate. Uh, the alcohol nip is there. It's a good um, wood char to it, too. I that feel. char is really pretty mm -hmm. dominant, <clears throat> I would say for sure. Uh, back of the palate is actually mm -hmm. mid palate's pretty buttery. It's yes. kind of creamy yep. and smooth, which is surprising. I, I didn't get that when I tried it when <clears throat> we first got home. I'm like, I got to try it immediately. Um, but it's sat, you know, we've been home for a month now. Uh, so a little bit of oxidation, not much really. Yeah, but it's got that definitely like that buttery there butterscotch. A, yes, like, there is a little bit of that going. A little rye pepper at the end. Uh huh. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's very pleasant and sweet. Mm -hmm. There's a sweet characteristic, and I had just a, I'd say like a half a dropper full from that taste, that you could coat. But <clears> yeah. Uh, the orange is there a little bit. The mm -hmm. barrel char is noticeable. There's a creaminess to it, mm -hmm. and like that, there's a softness lingering. to it. Yeah. Like, like you said, soft buttery, mm -hmm. butterscotch. Right, man, that's good. That is a very, <clears throat> very well made whiskey. Uh, if you happen to get to <clears throat> Louisville and you can get to the Evan Williams Experience, it is definitely worth picking up for your collection and drinking it and enjoying it. Um, that's a, got a nice finish, and yeah. it lingers a little while, too. You would think at 101 proof it would be uh, a little hotter than that, but it's What's not. That first one when it got me. And it was <clears throat> down the pipe. I wonder if water is going to open Five years it. of ingesting things, I still choke on it. I'm just going to go. Ah. <laughs> He's still, look at you keeping your composure. <laughs> Nary a flinch. Nope. I'm not going to taint mine with water. I'm a sophisticated
Maybe you should have thought about having that many dogs before you got that many dogs. I should have. Water opened it up, man. Did it? Yeah. It brought more. It brought some vanilla out. I should try some. I don't trust myself pouring. What the? No, I could probably. Yeah. You can do it. I can do it. Don't scare me, dude. I won't. That'd be rude. <laughs> That's good. That's a little good much. Amount. Yeah, it brought I the probably, it brought, brought it down out. to sixty proof. <laughs> yeah, it brought the vanilla out. Oh yeah. It brought the vanilla out. Adding water. <clears throat> don't let anybody tell you that ah oh, you should drink it neat that's the way people drink it <laughs> you drink your whiskey any way you want and actually um in scotland the scotch uh folks over there when they're enjoying their scotch they generally always have it and i've just learned this just recently um they generally always have it with some water they pour they pour a little bit of water and uh some of them I've seen in videos and stuff, pretty healthy okay. amount. Yeah. And they're like, it opens it up, you know, and, and if those that want to drink it neat, that's perfectly fine too. But water does open up your whiskey and it gives you different flavor compounds and it brings out some of the other things and it lowers the ABV so you can enjoy a little more of it. And let's be honest, don't we all enjoy just a little more when you're having a dram and it's really good. You'd like to have some more water a little bit will carry it bring some nuances for you to try yeah that that vanilla that vanilla came out i like it better without the water the taste wise yeah. i haven't tried that yet so let's give it a whirl it lost the butteriness to, for me with the water it sure did i get way more oak and rye spice and then all that nice creamy buttery scotchness it seems to be gone i think the water brought the rye right because it's a rye it's a rye mash bill um so you've got your corn it's a bourbon so it's over 51 percent corn then yeah, rye and better malted powder. barley so on For this me. one i have to agree with josh <clears throat> i like the nose with the water I yeah the nose bringing yeah out the vanilla sure. was a nice uh pleasant uh change mm -hmm. in the nose not that the nose before that was bad it wasn't it just you're trying to pick up vanilla from a bourbon right. because it's so characteristic of it and it's not there oops um it's only broken glass so it's not that was just water <laughs> so i think the rye it made the rye come out a little <clears throat> more which i think neat maybe this might have been a, a better choice i think so <clears throat> i liked it better neat even though i choked on on my first swallow yeah, it, it's got some more. The water brought the barrel forward. Right. It subdued the orange. It also uh, kind of buried the <clears throat> the caramel note, and it took away the uh, that buttery mouthfeel, that creamy mouthfeel that was prevalent before. <clears throat> the water took that away. Yeah, which is Interesting. strange. But it usually, kind of does that with. You know, it always seems to bring out the rye and the barrel char, I think, when you add the water. <coughs> yeah. Which I don't know why that is technically, but because we I'm learned sure there's a reason on the distillery, which was I remember you commented, you're like, I had no idea. The barrel brings out yes. the rye in the mash yeah. bill. Because you taste the white dog and it's sweet. It's very sweet and, and corn forward. You're like, where's all the rye and all that? Right. That's the barrel 70% of the flavor. Right. And it's for weird. some reason, the barrel extracts that rye characteristic, the spicy, peppery notes that you get when you're trying a, a rye-heavy whiskey. Um, it brings it out from the barrel because, just like Josh was saying, the white dog is a very corn-sweet mm -hmm. uh your basic moonshine yeah and it's really nice no characteristic basic. of peppery rye or anything it's very sweet so yeah. barrel. barrel this is a really so much. good whiskey i like this whiskey a lot mm -hmm. yeah. wish i wouldn't added water but yeah it's a great whiskey yeah. i would recommend it i give it a I, thumbs up yep for sure um we hope you all are enjoying the show if you are please subscribe the like button give a like button Throw some comments below. We respond back as quickly as we can. Um, Any ideas, stuff yeah. to try. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we'll, always up for new ideas. Yep. 
we have quite a few whiskeys that have been donated for us to try. Yep. So we've got some neat stuff. We're just continuing with our distillery trip first. When we finish all of those, then we're going to go back into our regular whiskeys that folks donate to us to try or they lend us to try because we give them back. Um, sometimes they end sometimes. up saying just keep them, but not yeah. all. We've got some good whiskeys coming your way, <clears throat> some lottery stuff that friends have won. So yeah. they let us let us uh, bring them here to the bar to review for you all. Uh, Evan Williams, 12 year, 101 proof, great distillery, great tour, great place. It's hard to find. Go I think Kentucky. you can get it outside of the distillery because I think I saw it somewhere. Really? Did I see it at that place in California, that liquor place? And I took a picture and you said, I that can't believe... That was Weller 12. No, not the Weller 12. It was the radio. You thought you couldn't get the 12. Maybe. I can't remember what they said at the distillery. I could be totally wrong. So, <coughs> you know, if you're curious, research it. But yeah. as far as we know, you can only get it at the distillery. Right. But If I, you can I get it in it. your area... Maybe it was the Blue Label, Evan. Grab Maybe. it. The Blue Label? Do they have a Blue Label? Oh. If you can get yeah. it, grab it. If you're in Kentucky... Swing on down. Yeah. Go downtown Louisville. Have a nice dinner. Go do the tour. Don't even do the tour if you don't want to. Just walk in. It's on the right-hand side past the big fountain. And grab two bottles because that's what they'll let you get. Or one if you don't want to spend the money. Uh, I think that's all I've yeah, got. Me too. Good whiskey. Buy it yep. if you're down there. Yep. Or up there, wherever you live. Yeah. Could be up or down. Yeah. You never know. Or across. Across. The T at the end. It's opening up now with the water, so. <laughs> um, as always, enjoy your whiskeys and bourbons. Any, any way, way you like. like. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, pal.